What's up, YouTube world? Mr. Kid DC Wrestling back once again with another video. First things first, man. I don't want y'all to think just because I'm posting this title and the thumbnail in the video doesn't mean I'm woke culture. That this is not a, a woke culture video. This is me reacting to woke culture. So I don't want y'all to think, oh, he he's copying off woke culture. I'm. Mean, this is mostly a reaction uh, video. These like these woke culture video list videos are mostly reactionary just to just for confirmation to anyone who is in question about that so we got another reaction video from woke culture they put out a list uh august 10th this is the 10 aw wrestlers who told you they were pissed these aw stars were not happy and they let fans slash their boss know in some rather creative ways so let's see Let's see who's on this list, and of course, the thumbnail, I guess, for this one is Thunder Rosa with the sandbagging, because, well, Thunder Rosa, is, I guess, is known for sandbagging her opponents, kind of making them look bad, basically, pr pretty much, I guess. So, let's get into number 10. We got Ricky Starks isn't happy with some former WWE arrivals. Man, um, and I guess we got this tweet right here. It says, I don't believe in having a chip on my shoulder because that makes me a whiny little you know what. But what I do believe in is these people who come in and the attitude of a higher than and we are a less than. You get what I'm saying? I think it should be noted that there's a reason those people don't work there anymore and we should look at the facts of why. Wow, so Ricky Starks ain't holding back. He's like, look here, like, y'all didn't, y'all just, the only reason why you even got the spot is because you are an ex-WWE guy, you know, you, you know, while people like me are homegrown and been putting in that work, been putting in that grind, so I guess Ricky Starks ain't holding back. All right, we come in at number nine. Eddie Keeks to Ken Hodge's frustration. As you can see by this one here, man, clearly this was from the everywhere barbed wire death match, which was not good. Ooh, excuse me, sorry about that. But nah, man, that 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 uh barbed wire death match, I mean, I, I said it in the review, it, it was overbooked as hell, you know, really could have been the end of the Eddie Jericho appreciate society feud and Jericho pretty much got the win there. Um, yeah, it, you could tell he was not happy about that man. That that match was just uh. all right. Coming in at number eight, we got Darby Allen reminds you the AW originals cannot be touched here. That was a pretty underrated match, MJF and Darby at uh, Full Gear 2021. Uh, but it seems here that. Uh, Darby said in the ha that hashtag show that at a recent San Diego Comic Con that basically his new his showdown with MGF served to remind us the fans that the AEW originals ain't nobody gonna touch us and he's got a point man you know you like you can sign all these you could sign all these you know wrestlers but at the end of the day you know you can't touch us four pillars um, obviously Darby Sammy well. Let's be real, Sammy really shouldn't even be a part of the pillars anymore. But Darby, Sam Lee, Jungle Boy, and MJFs. You know, those are those are the four those are the four ones. So I can kind of see where Darby's going there. Coming in at number seven, we got numerous names taking the Twitter over lack of TV time. Ethan Page obviously coming in this thumbnail here. And uh basically reminding you of a tweet that he put out. This is the tweet that he put out on Twitter. Which I can kind of see why. I mean, I mean, look who he's facing. He's facing Leon Ruff, you know, it's, or Leon Ruff. And so it's like, you finally put me on TV and I got to go up against this this dude who, and some people would say. So, yeah, Ethan Page clearly not happy about that. But I think that was for storyline purposes, obviously. I don't really think that was like a, I mean, it could have been a real life thing, but who knows in AEW. Surprise, this ain't ranked lower. Number, number Coming in at number six, MJ hints at, oh, he hints at his upcoming pipe bomb, incoming pipe bomb, excuse me. Wow. So it says here that in an appearance on Barstool Wrestling, uh, Freeman admit his frustration at the ex effing WWE guys all making an absurd amount of money. Ooh. So MJF, he's been planning that pipe bomb for quite a while. He's like, you know what? I'm going to just, just give it some time and, you know, I'm, I'm going to say what I need to say. And when I do it, it's going to be it's going to be something. Ah, uh, yes. Coming in at number five, Kip Saban is underrated and he's over it. Yeah, I don't... I remember, like, I cannot watch a, every AEW show 
And then I see Kip Sabian over there. I'm like, bro, what is this dude doing? Like, when is he going to take it off? Like, is he going to come in the ring? Is he going to storm the ring and attack somebody? Like, what's the payoff to this? And it seems that they might be doing something because you got Pac with his All-Atlantic Championship. He actually went out to Kip Sabian. And he, even he was like, all right, dude, like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Like, like what are you doing? So it looks like he's going to be the next challenger or something. But, uh, yeah, as you can see there is what I was talking about. So... Who knows? Maybe he'll finally get it off his head. Ooh, coming in at number four, we got FTR shoots on the rankings. I'm surprised it's not FTR shoots on the Young Bucks. But, uh, yeah, so this is from Uncle Dax, FTR, talking about the uh, the rating system. Yeah, the AEW rating system, the rankings, it's so... Oh, it's so weird, honestly. Like, it wins and losses matter, but, like, then you give title shots to people who don't really deserve it, like... It, it makes no sense, you know what I mean? So there, that, I can kind of see what they're talking about. And that's what Cash Wheeler talked about. With Webb as Jericho, he was like, you know, nothing how he would love to work with Swerve and Lee at some point, but we're number one contender, so that probably can't happen. Um, dang, so FTR not holding back. Uh, number three, Miro Likes said he had it better in WWE. Oh, yeah, so this was recent, too. He put out a, there was someone, I don't know who put out the tweet, but Miro liked the tweet. Um, that was, that was, um, that was, that was something, you know what I mean? That, that was something, you know, <laughs> Miro had it better. Miro had it better in uh, WWE, so there, 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 there it is right there. Are you still in AEW? Seems like you had it better in WWE. Hey, Rusev Day was over, man. They just never really capitalized on it. Coming in at number two, Thunder Rosa fires back with a sandbagging T-shirt. Yeah, Thunder. Yeah, um, I I mean it just. Yeah, they, they they keep bringing up the fact like oh Thunder Rosa she just likes to make her opponents look bad and stuff and how she just I I don't really know man, I don't know just ah uh, coming in at number one I don't I don't even know why this is number one. You, you might as well just put MJF's pipe bomb at number one. But the Young Bucks bio is the gift that keeps on giving. This, this is just, this really ain't like a shoot thing. This is more of a, oh, playing around, trying to get the internet attention. So I, I don't really know how I feel about this being at number one. But so anyway, well, that's the video, guys. 10 AEW wrestlers who um, told you they were pissed. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, yeah, this has been the kid DC wrestling and so on. Um, yeah.